Hey guys, I'm Dave and welcome to the Troll Gallery. Today we're going to assemble a piece of equipment that's for use after you're finished in the shop. We like to celebrate the little things in life, including those goals that we set for ourselves. Several months ago, we decided that when I hit 2,000 subscribers, I'd get a kegerator. But we hit that number, and I wasn't ready. I hadn't done my research, and then I found what I wanted, but then I couldn't find the fridge, and, and then, well, this happened. But today, all the parts are here, and we're going to assemble a kegerator. And I'm going to take you along and show you how easy it is in case you want to do one for yourself. I went into this build knowing exactly what I wanted. A two-tap kegerator with taps on the top and a front opening door. After some research, I settled on working with Kegco. I found the twin tower and all the accessories I would need except the fridge itself. I thought I could find one at the big box store for some short money. I did, but once my parts arrived, I looked at the space I needed and realized that an under-counter fridge was just too short. It just didn't have the height needed to hold a sixth of a keg and all the plumbing needed to move the beer. After an extensive search, I caved in, spent a little more money, and bought the perfect fridge from Keg Co. The fridge arrived and it was time to start the build. Normally you'd start by drilling an inch and a half hole through the top of the fridge, but this one came pre-drilled. Next you'd pre-drill for the tower mounting holes, but again, these are already here. With your mounting holes drilled, you can feed the beer lines from the tower into the fridge. If you cut your own hole, you may want to ease the edges or insert a PVC sleeve so you don't damage the lines. Oh, and don't forget the gasket that goes between the tower and the fridge. Line up the tower, gasket, and mounting holes, and secure the tower in place. This particular tower comes with two sets of screws, and the short M5 by 16 millimeter screws work for this fridge. If you're using a different fridge, then you can opt for the longer bolts and nuts to mount your tower. As always, I start all my fasteners first and then come back and tighten things down later. This gives me the ability to move things around to line everything up. Next, I connected the faucets to the tower. I put them on hand tight at first. Then I came back with the included spanner wrench and locked them in place. Once that was done, I added the included tap handles. These will do for now, but I see some custom wooden ones coming in my future. To complete the outside of the kegerator, I snapped on this fancy railing. This one came with the fridge, but if it didn't, I probably would have fabricated one. I'll probably store a few pint glasses up here. I inserted a washer into the beer hose before connecting it to the coupler. An adjustable wrench is great for tightening these together. It's a bit awkward with this arm thing, but I managed to get both lines connected. Moving on to the gas lines, I slid a clamp onto one of the ends of the CO2 line and then pushed it onto the hose barb of the coupler. If it puts up too much of a fight, you can soak the hose in hot water to soften things up. Once fully seated, I crimped the hose clamp to lock things in place. And again, I did this for both sides. The other end of those lines were attached to the regulator in the same way. The hose onto the barb, fully seated, and then clamped in place. Next, I connected the regulator to the CO2 tank, again snugging up the connection with an adjustable wrench. This fridge came with two tank mounts, one inside that I'll be using and another external mount if you need more space. I went with the inside mount because I think it keeps things just a bit neater. I put the tank into the mount and then added a bolted nut to secure the tank in place. 
but just snug since they're only holding the tank in place. To connect the keg, you take the cap off, and then you can insert the coupler into the keg and rotate it clockwise until it stops. Then you pull out the handle on the coupler and push it down until it clicks into position. Then you can set the keg back into the fridge. It's time to open the regulator on the CO2 tank. The challenge with the inside mount is that you've got to get the regulator and hoses set in just the right spot so they'll fit and that you can see the gauges. After a few tries, I settled on this. Sure, it's tough for these old eyes to see the gauges, but I finally got it set to about 10 or 12 PSI. Now you know I just have to mark my territory. So I took a few minutes to add my logo to the face of the fridge. At this point, there's nothing to do but pour that first beer. Alright, here we go. You earned it. Putting this guy together took way less time than all my research. And we still haven't decided what that second keg's going to be, but when we do, the keg rig is ready for it. And I don't think I mentioned it, but this fridge came with a built-in drip tray. And if you use a different fridge, you might want to get a drip tray because beer can get messy. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the smaller fridges have an issue with height. This has an internal dimension of 28 inches, and I can't see going any smaller and still being able to use a style keg. Oh, and this wasn't a sponsored video. I bought everything that went into it, although I'd still recommend working with the Beverage Factory. They were great in answering all my questions, and I think I got a pretty fair price for the equipment that I got. And speaking of price... I think I save about 20 cents per glass buying beer by the keg as opposed to buying it in the can at the store. So with that said, in somewhere between four or 5,000 beers, I'll break even on this guy. Unless I start charging my friends $7 a pour, in which case I'll be rolling in dough in no time. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Was there something I could have done different, easier, smarter? Drop them in the comments below. And I'm also curious if you have a keg rater or would like to get one or perhaps build one. Drop those in the comments also. As usual, I've added links to not only the company that I worked with, but some of the tools and equipment that I used in this video. And some of them may have affiliate links. And should you need to purchase something and use those links, it does help keep the channel going. If you enjoyed this video, maybe give us a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you haven't already, Maybe it's time to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified each time we put out a new video. Honestly, don't have a clue what's coming up next. And yes, I still have limitations with this thing. So until then, have a great day. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Bye. We got a kangarator.